Well, I think we're live. Uh, we are about to make a recording as quickly as possible. How to uh, how to get the Lotro client installed with a minimal with with no trouble. Whether you're using the SSG standalone installer or you're using the Steam installer. Now, the former, the SSG standalone installer, they actually have largely fixed that. You really shouldn't need to do what I'm going to show you, but it still won't hurt and could possibly help. Um, now, the Steam installer, that thing's a mess. Um, you will need to do what I'm about to go over, uh, or it'll fail to launch after the initial download from Steam, and then once you, if you were to fix that, then it will give you a whole bunch of messiness uh, about halfway through the patching process. Uh, I did a live stream kind of investigating both the standalone installer and one stream. And then later I did a live stream investigating the, uh, the Steam installer. And uh, again, I stand corrected. The SSG standalone installer now works. At some point in the last two years, they fixed it. Uh, but it had been a problem since before 2015 and up until a year or two ago. But they did fix it, so we've got to give them credit. And uh, the Steam installer, though, is still just, uh, not to be uncharitable, but hot garbage. It is terrible. So um, let's. Uh, this is going to be live streamed. I'm also recording it, though. So ideally, let me just confirm that my recording is happening. Yeah, it is. So um, ideally, I will chop this up and make it more concise and put it up as like really the only video that needs to be on this site anymore uh, if I don't keep live streaming the actual game or whatever. So uh, I guess away we go. So uh, here's where I'll probably start the recording, right? Um, let's see. Here we have an absolutely pristine Windows 11 uh, set up. Uh, I actually, this is in a virtual machine. Um, I, now that I got my physical machine all dialed in and perfect again, I don't want to have to keep wiping it. So now that I've got my virtual machine, uh, the ability to run virtual machines again, I can just revert snapshots and things. It makes this so much easier. So anyways, the point of this is to be concise and go as fast as possible. So what do you need to um, get LotRo running on an absolutely brand new pristine install of Windows 11. This is the newest build, uh, build 2H, uh, uh, 22 2H. <laughs> so uh, it's the uh, absolute newest one that we can get. I say we're going to go quick and then I just dawdle about, but don't worry, we will start really going fast here. Yeah, 22H2 installed today. So here we go. Are you ready? What you are going to need is the um, various, I really don't want to use Edge, but I also don't want to have to go through installing Chrome for this video. So we're just going to do, we're going to use what's built into Windows. Uh, I'm going to start without my data. I'm going to continue without this data. I'm going to uncheck everything possible. Confirm and start browsing. I do not want to join Microsoft Rewards. I would actually like to take, turn this to dark and dark and stormy just because I've just got that grim outlook, I guess. And uh, let's see here. That's fine. Sure, finish. Can we start browsing now? Thank you. Okay, so then let's go to Google. We don't want to be using Bing uh, just because I'm used to Google and I don't want to lead you astray. So the things we are going to need are the visual C++ redistributable runtimes, several versions of those, and then also the DirectX, um, the DirectX redistributables, but not the one most people tell you to install. Um, to be safest here, we're going to get the, what's called the June 2010 redistributable. So let's go ahead and get started. First, we want to type in uh, Microsoft uh, Visual C++. Ah, C++. Uh, we want the 2005 redistributable. So there we go. Now, please, each one of these, be careful. Go to the actual URL that you want to be going to. Uh, not to get too into the weeds on this, but you want Microsoft to appear here at the beginning of the URL. Doesn't help you <laughs> if you find Microsoft farther down and it's actually going to www.ihackyou.com 
facebook.com forward slash, hey, I'm really Microsoft. It'll be safe. That's that's going to be bad. So www.microsoft, here we go. Microsoft Visual C++ 2005 Service Pack 1 Redistributable. It says Service Pack 1 as though this is to be added on, but this actually does include all of the... It's It's the redistributable plus the service pack, everything all in one. So um, let's go ahead and download it. English, download. Now you want the x86 one and the x64, but not the IA64 one. So we're gonna say okay to these two. We're gonna say next. And it's saying, can we really download multiple files? So you'll have to say allow for this site before it will download both at once. And they are both there. Now if I know my my edge, we can click this little folder here and that will open our downloads folder. So there they are. Now, please bear with me here. We want to actually uh, click new and folder because those are the 2005 ones and otherwise they all download with very similar username or usernames, file names, and you won't be able to tell which one's which. So go ahead and put those in there, 2005. And while I have you here, let's go ahead and make another folder, 2010. Whoop, 2010. And 2015 2019. Although I think the package we're actually going to download goes to 2022. But, anyways, so we got the 2005 ones. We're going to go get the 2010 ones. So, again, let's go back to Google. And we're going to type Microsoft plus plus 2010 redistributable. All right. And there that is. So again, check your URL, be safe, then click it. And English download. And again, the x86 and the x64, not the IA64. So let's grab those two and say next. And they are downloading. Uh, Edge just starts the download. You might have to say save or, you know, whatever. Um, just make sure you know where they're going. So these have downloaded. Let's make sure they're done. They are not done. Come on. Oh, you know what? If you ever look like this, this is like the files in progress. And sometimes the window just doesn't update. So I'm going to click anywhere in this window and then press F5 on my keyboard. And it just refreshes the screen. And they were done. The screen just hadn't refreshed. So, um, all right, let's uh, drag those. See what I mean by there's no indication that's 2010 versus, well, if you hover over it, the title, because if you were to go to properties, here we go, I'm off on a tangent. You could actually see um, here under description, it says 2010, but who's gonna do that? So we grab these, by the way, I'm holding down control. That's a Windows convention that not everyone knows, but you know, uh, I'm assuming we are dealing with, you know, not necessarily computer savvy people who just want their their Lord of the Rings game to work. So um, here we go. You hold down control, and then you can select both. Then you just drag any one of them and it'll grab both. And we're going to drag it to the 2010 folder. And now it's in the 2010 folder. Okay, now here's the tricky one. I've never actually installed this one before. Truth be told, the LotRo installer and its final phases of patching does appear to install the Visual C++ 2015 and 2019s, but you can't do any harm doing what we're about to do. So uh, we're going to go back to Google. This time I just hit back a few times, and we're going to say 2015. See that, that one there, 2015? Eh, I'm going to continue typing. What happens if we just say 2015 redistributable? Yeah, but that's not what we want, because these latest ones say 2015 to 2019. So let's do a search for 2015, 2019 redistributable. Latest supported. And then this one looks like if you were looking for that, you might be able to find it. But I figure, why not install the bundle that goes all the way up to 2022? So let's go ahead and do that. And a much more complicated website, but you can find them here. Skip the ARM64. We just want the x86 and the x64. So here we go. First one downloaded. Second one downloaded. 
let's go to the folder that they're in. Um, now, if hopefully you're downloading to your downloads folder, and if you, in whatever browser you're using, you don't have the little thing that says, you know, show in folder, just go to File Explorer and go to your downloads folder. But here they are. Oh, look at this. Here's that unconfirmed stuff again. Anyways, just refreshed again, and they're gone. That probably won't happen to you. Not sure why it's happening to me right now, but uh, here we go. I'm going to drag those into there. All right. And while we're downloading stuff, let's just go ahead, go back to Google. This time I'm not going to use my back keys. Uh, go to Google and type direct X, one word, uh, June 2010 redistri... Uh, that's fine. And now... I don't have to spell redistributable because it completes for me. And again, Microsoft.com there, DirectX end user runtimes June 2010. That's what we want. Why this one and not the DirectX web setup? Uh, because this doesn't care what you've installed prior. It just installs all of the uh, all of the DirectX extensions that are necessary and needed by pretty much any game, not just LotRo. Um, and we've seen some folks who have had some trouble um, because they try to install the DirectX web installer and it says, you already have it all installed, you don't need it. And this one doesn't care, it will just install it. Here's a quick little Windows 11 tweak on a fresh install. I really like to see file extensions, so let's turn this on. Go to view, show, File name extensions. There we go. All right, we're going to drag that into DirectX. That's all LotRow needs. That's all of LotRow's um, prerequisites for a successful install and to use it. Um, we can close our browser. And we're just going to start installing these. Uh, let's start with 2005. So uh, it doesn't matter which order you do it in. You do want both the x86 and x64, because if you're running any 32-bit uh, um, applications, they'll want uh, the x86 one, and LotRo still installs both x86 and x64. So, right-click, say run as administrator, yes, yes, and uh, this shouldn't take long, although now that I'm on a virtual machine, it's taking longer than it did <laughs> on my uh, on my main rig. So, uh, what's behind here? Come on. Did it finish? Maybe it's just done. Hard to tell on a virtual machine. Let's run the other one. It's quite a guide, huh? The blind leading the blind. Oh, you know what? A nice little thing we can do here. Hold on. Let's go to settings, apps, installed apps. And uh, yeah, there, they did install. And you can actually watch these appear. We'll put this off to the corner. You can actually watch them appear as I install them. So yeah, it installed. Um, I was just, you know, some applications just silently succeed and others want you to click finish, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, all right, so let's try this one. We're now in the 2010 folder. We're going to install both of these. This one we say, I have read and accept the license terms, but do not send me information. Don't check that bottom one unless you want to. Uh, I wouldn't. Uh, go ahead and click install. This one's a little more verbose. And we actually click finish on this one. And as you saw, it just popped up over there. That's the x86 one. Let's install the x64 one. And we'll see it pop up here in a minute. Even before we click finish, it appears there. So those are the 2010 and 2005. I'm going to go ahead and install these. I recommend you do too. They won't do any harm. Having said that, that's all you actually... Well, no, you also want to install the DirectX one. So just ignore me. Let's just install them. They do no harm. They really can't do any harm. And you'll get them eventually if you install enough software on your computer. So many things use these. 
that's actually why um, setup successful. All right. Um, those are quick. Um, that's actually why some people have problems with lot row and some people don't. Ironically, the less gummed up and pristine your computer is, the more likely you are to have. <laughs> I shouldn't say that because you, a super gummed up computer might have other issues. But by installing other software, which usually comes with these uh, redistributables, these Visual C, Microsoft C++, you might already have these installed and then lot row would have installed without any trouble. So if we go and we look now, we have 2005, 2005, 2010, 2010, 2015 to 2022, and 2015 to 2022. It's why two of each? Because x64 and uh, x86. Of course, this one predates when they used to really differentiate. So this one's just the basic one, the vanilla one, and this is x64. And from here on out, yeah, anyways, you get it. And now the last prerequisite is this DirectX that we downloaded. And I'm going to right-click and say Run as Administrator. This one gets a little trickier. Um, because first, it wants to just extract to a place. And it's going to dump lots and lots of files in wherever you tell it to go. So don't just point it to your desktop or the root of your hard drive or something like that. You'll make a mess of it. So we actually want to say... Uh, Let's see, uh, like if I were to just say desktop and say OK, that would be a problem because it would make a mess. So we're actually going to create a folder to contain all this. Um, I usually just, for this type of thing, I make a folder called INST, short for install. Now the thing is, it probably won't refresh this, so I won't see that INST there. So I can cancel this browsing for a folder. If you don't want to mess with any of this, you can just say c colon backslash inst, and it will create the inst folder on your on the root of your C drive and put it in there. But what since we're gonna we're already halfway to having it nicely on my desktop, I just rebrowse, and now if I expand desktop, there's the inst folder I just created. We'll click OK, and a whole bunch of stuff comes out into this install folder. As you can see, <laughs> you didn't want all of this on your uh, desktop. So anyways, we find the dxsetup.exe in this location where we extracted this. And we right click and we say run as administrator. And it says, I accept. We say I accept and we click next. Um, in the live stream I did of this, in one of them, I keep doing these live streams and then rambling on and on. Um, I actually showed what changes uh, in the um, WoW64 or SysWoW64 or whatever folder. Um, you can see all the extensions that it dumps in there. And uh, they are not there, especially, I think it was probably in the Steam install one I did. Uh, they were not there uh, after uh, the Steam install. But the ones you need are there for the, for the Standing Stone, Standing Stone games, SSG's uh, Stand Alone installer. Oh, okay, that was confusing. Okay, we finish. Okay, we are good to go. Um, if you were to install Lot Row now, you would have no problems, unless there is something otherwise mangled about your system. But what we've done here is, if it's a pristine system, uh, if it's a pristine system, a pristine install of Windows. We've gotten past the problem with pristine, pristine systems, which is it doesn't have the proper prerequisites. And uh, you, uh, it doesn't have the proper prerequisites. And the game doesn't install the prerequisites it needs, or at least for Steam, it doesn't. any. Uh, so we are just fixing that and making sure everything's good. Um, we're going to start the download. This is going to go on and on and on, uh, the patching. Uh, I might stop the live stream. Uh, but, you know, there's got to be somebody out there who's going to watch this and be like, oh, sure, sure, it's going to work now. Well, here we go. Um, the, uh, it, the, for the, we're just going to use a standalone installer. Uh, this is in a VM, so when we actually do get it running, it's going to look terrible, um, and the frame rate's going to be terrible. But uh, that's okay for the purposes of our demonstration. Um, if you'd like to see me 
do the Steam install, that's in a prior live stream. And you can see me purposefully kind of make mistakes, you know, do it like an end user would do it, um, see it fail, and then install the prerequisites manually. First, the Visual C++, and that gets it to get into the patcher, and then the patcher barfs and has problems because of the DirectX, the lack of DirectX runtimes. And then things got a, l a little crabby to the point where I was like, do I, would I even trust this install of LotRo? It's probably fine, but I don't know. I, I then, you can then go install the, the DirectX uh, runtimes we, like we just did and then launch the game and everything works. At, w at which point I'm a purist, I would probably go back uninstall the game and reinstall it just to make sure everything's fine. I mean, <laughs> it should be fine. I actually compared the directory sizes. It was only missing one file and that might not be a file that's actually used by the game. It might be vestigial. It might be a text file. It might be a log file. Who knows? But it was just one file missing and the size was comparable. I got to get this running while I talk. Otherwise, I'm just wasting time. I'm wasting your time and that's inexcusable. Um, so let's uh, let's go ahead and get this running. Um, so yeah, it probably would have been fine. Uh, an ugly install that ends up fine as long as you know to go get the, these prere prerequisites like I did in that live stream. Um, but uh, I just feel like, I mean, <laughs> you see the weird, I almost said weird blank things that uh, <laughs> that have been happening to people lately with like, crashing in height bold and then being locked out and they reinstall the game and for some reason that helps which makes no sense to me uh there's nothing about what you're doing in the game that should reach out and corrupt something in your install um i mean it's not like writing a cache or anything to the uh, it, that just makes no sense to me but hey that's what they say is happening and uh but that's yet another reason i'd say to be very cautious and make sure you get a clean install of this game. Um, so that's why I said that, you know, at the end of that Steam install live stream, yeah, it was running, but now that the prerequisites are in, I would uninstall the game and reinstall it. I know it's a long download and, you know, things like that, and it depends on your internet connection. I'm blessed, humbled, and fortunate to have a gigabit internet connection here, so this actually doesn't take too long takes a while for um by live streaming standards because i've talked myself out the last few live streams i really don't know what i will ramble on about during this entire download and patching cycle but um you know maybe maybe i will be able to um if we if we actually had a viewer they could write a question in chat and i could try to answer it um but uh you know this is just me doing what I love to do, you know, hard day work, come home, install LotRo. That's, you know, that's my recreation. I don't play the game. I just install it and I uninstall it, reinstall it. It's just what I do. Um, so uh, at least that's what my kids now think I do. Um, you know, I, I get, uh, I get torn. I get pulled into, uh, you know, my daughter asked me why I, uh, she's like, you got banned from the LotRo forums? And I went into that in one of the live streams. And uh, and then I've gone on, uh, you know, uh, I, I don't want to be, I don't want to hate play LotRo. You know what I mean? Like hate watching the Star Wars sequels. Uh, I used to hate watch the prequels, but now I don't mind the prequels so much now that I've seen what they've done with the sequels. J.J. Uh, <laughs> um, Abrams does not understand hyperspace. Uh... <laughs> uh uh, not, they don't understand hyperspace in any of those movies, but J.J. Abrams in his, the first sequel and the third sequel really seems to like willfully uh, destroy w everything we used to know about hyperspace. I get that Ryan Johnson did his thing with, uh, you know, s hyperspeed ramming. I have my issues with that too. But for J.J. Abrams, you just got the sense that he just wanted to do cool things and people probably raised their hand and said uh you can't actually fly uh the millennium falcon out of a hangar at light speed well we'll just have han solo say i've never tried it before and then but that's nothing i told you i'd 
did I say I would find something to talk about <laughs> during this? Uh, this will all be edited out in the concise video upload version of this. Uh, anyways, um, but when they're doing the light speed skipping in the third sequel, uh, Rise of Skywalker, oh God, you, you just don't, I mean, we've gone from Han Solo saying, you know, the nav computer takes a few minutes to calculate something. You don't want to fly into a supernova, et cetera, to, hey, we'll just, you know, come in out of hyperspace in a city of skyscrapers and somehow not die. And then we'll light speed skip into the, you know, almost into the maw of a creature, but somehow still not hit it. It's, it's just... <sighs> I I am such a nerd. Anyways, uh, <laughs> so, um, I mean, yes, they do that. They, they, they hyperspeed through the shield in The Force Awakens, right, to get onto Starkiller Base. Spoiler alert, right? Uh, <laughs> I'm assuming everyone's seen it. Um, it's just, again, uh, uh, <laughs> pointing out how they screwed up the concept of light speed in one movie doesn't make it okay that they did it again in a later movie. Um, so anyways, where was I? Um, sequels? How the heck did I get onto Star Wars? If I had a viewer, maybe they could tell me. Well, anyways, um... I was probably going on. Oh, like hate watching. Yeah, no. I don't want to live stream Lot Row just to hate play it. I actually am looking forward to playing Lot Row again and enjoying Lot Row again. My daughter is playing it. Um, she's now enjoying it. She played it f four or five years ago, but she was really too young to appreciate the game mechanics and things. It was more just, you know, the scenery and running around, which is fine. I, I know I know people in their 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s who play it for that reason. I don't know anyone in their 70s who plays it, but I'm sure they exist. Um, but uh, now she's actually old enough to, you know, understand what's going on around her. So that's cool, and it's gotten me kind of back into it. So what I think we might do is uh, her and I will play an hour per night, and I'll just kind of do... I'll try not to be negative. I mean, you've heard... Of you've heard my concerns about the direction of the the direction the game has taken for the last decade or so into just more and more easy mode. Uh, whoops! Hey, that's something I should have mentioned. Uh, turning off sleep and things like that while this thing's downloading. Um, make sure you turn off uh, so your computer doesn't go to sleep in the middle of downloading patches and stuff like that. It just puts the screen to sleep right there, but uh, I'll need to insert a little chunk of that f uh, when we're uh, when we're uh, uh, anyways when we're all done here. I'll I'll record a quick section of that that I can just insert into the video. But basically, you just click start, type sleep, change when the PC sleeps when plugged in, turn these off. If you actually turn off the top one for turn off my screen, then it realizes, well, then I also can't turn off the computer, so it does it for you. Close these two little notifications about being a bad environmentalist, and now we won't get that blanking out anymore. So, uh, yeah, that's that's where we're at. Uh, how are things with you? I'm going to mute my mic here and take a sip of... Uh, Yeah, right. So, uh, other things we can do while we're installing here is just kind of clean up Windows 11 or make it more like um, more like how we like it. So, uh, taskbar settings. Come on in here and uh, let's get rid of all these ones that we can't just right-click and unpin. So, I turn off all of these. 
and then I come down and I like to see all my tray icons and not have this little carrot down here. So other system tray icons, you just turn them all on. And as you install new software, those will start. Um, you'll need to come in and turn those on as well. Taskbar behavior. Let's put it on the left, like good old Windows, every Windows. And uh, let's see here. That's pretty much it for me um, in here. I also like to, uh, excuse me, soda's coming up on me here. Um, I also like the start menu to have more pinned available. And I really don't like that settings is just a shortcut. It should be like ingrained into the start menu. So you can actually adjust that by clicking start, right clicking anywhere in the start menu and saying, I'm sorry, a blank area of the um, start menu, say start settings. And uh, we go to more pins. And then down here we say folders and we can add the settings button to the folder or to the start. So there's settings now. And we have more ability to pin stuff. And I would remove a lot of this stuff that comes with Windows now, but that's just me. You're not really installing, uninstalling this stuff because if you create a new user and log in, they're all back again, but whatever. Rather than unpin, I say uninstall. Just feels cleaner. So, uh, you get the, I gotta try this thing. It's, uh, allegedly, this is the new video editing software, but I'm trying to finally learn Premiere Pro a little better than I've, I've used it in the past to just get done what I need to get done, and then I, Abandon it and forget everything, but I actually want to learn it now. Um, all right, well, we've got just a little ways to go here. When it's finalizing, it's not actually downloading. It's like decompressing this. Uh, so if you were to watch uh, Task Manager... Go to performance. We'll watch our. Yeah, I mean, that's almost a gigabit coming down there. That's very close. Can't really ask for more than about 950 due to packet overhead. Uh, I shouldn't say packet overhead, but just general overhead for the connection. Advertise is one gig, but you're never going to quite get one gig. I should never say never, though. So Windows 11 is now looking a bit more like Windows 10. I wonder what notification we got. Oh, <laughs> shouldn't be necessary. Let's go ahead and we're going to right click and go to Device Manager and you can see that this is a virtual machine. So its display adapter is Red Hat VertIO GPU. Processors are passed through though, so that's nice. Storage controllers, Red Hat, Vertio, SCSI. Um, yeah, I wasn't using a, I wasn't using a VM for the last few live streams just because I had moved from using Hyper V and then um, uh, VirtualBox and things like that, and I had migrated over to Proxmox because that's what I use at work, and I just hadn't. Uh, tried installing a game on one of these VMs. I wasn't even sure if LotRo would launch. And uh, so I just said, eh, I'll just wipe my physical machine. I wanted to do it anyways and put the newest build of Windows 11 on it and uh, see if it would in fact run and watch how the installers did it. But now it's so nice to have virtual machines back because once I'm done with this, I can just revert this back to the snapshot I took. And if I need to do it again, I can do it again. If I need to like take that little snippet of just setting the sleep settings to what they should be, I can do that. Um, so yeah, it's cool. 82%, almost there. So this recording will, this this live stream will eventually be an edited down recording and this whole thing will go and fast through fast forward through it so i don't really even need to talk right now because there's no one here <laughs> um 
It was crazy. I got eight viewers during my first live stream. Apparently people got wise to it, though, and realized, oh my god, this guy's just installing a game over and over again. Why would I watch this? So, uh, yeah. Ninety-four percent. How long has it been since we started downloading? Less than ten minutes, right? They really did. Wherever they're now hosting, ah oh man, they used to. <laughs> they used to uh, have the files downloaded through a service called Pando, and uh, people didn't really trust Pando. They also didn't really understand how Pando was being used, though. Because Pando was never used to actually do the patching of the game once it was installed. You could actually download the game with Pando. And once the game was installed, you could uninstall Pando and never have it on your computer again. And happily patch the game and play. And same thing with Akamai. Um, uh, which is who they moved to after Pando. But uh, <laughs> I actually got uh, the community manager for Lotro to crack up. Because during one of their Twitch streams, I bring back Pando! And he seemed to, he seemed to know what I was talking about, uh, and and that got a laugh out of him. Um, and this was after I was banned, and I was using Hurun as my name, so uh, you know, no hard feelings. Uh, <laughs> so uh, that cracked me up. Uh, but no, I, whenever they ask, you know, what can we do to improve the game, I would say, bring back Pando. Um, anyways, that's not serious for those not familiar with Pando. We would not want Pando back. Pando is bad. Well, we're about there. And then the patching starts, so, you know, don't get too excited. Everyone should join Scenario, uh, the world builder at SSG, uh, on Twitch TV. I gotta try Twitch. I'm kind of a YouTube I'm kind of a, uh, I'm, my preference is towards YouTube, but, uh, um, I, I, I should try Twitch. Uh, no webcam. You might have noticed no webcam. I don't know. I, I'm, I don't see any need to show my completely average in every way mug on the, on the stream or ever. Um, I, I there's, there's some, channels out there and everyone's different but there are some channels where uh they you know they, they ham it up so much for the camera and you're just there for the con you know the content but not necessarily them and uh i don't know i just feel like I, I'm, <laughs> I'm just like nobody needs to see your face for what we're here to do so you will not see my face um i don't think i'll be changing that policy i mean if anything i would just like to show my lego ad at or my uh, my my Middle Earth map behind me, things like that, or that could be fun. But um, it's hard to turn on a webcam and not get yourself in it. Um, well, it's not hard, but um, yeah, I'd have to take it off my monitor and like shine it around the room. Okay, we're patching now. Uh, let's see. Um, yeah. Also, I am an in, an inveterate nose picker, and you know. With no webcam, I can just pick away. It, no one's gonna know, right? So that's that's awesome. Got that going for me. Uh, let's see. The best thing about my Lego AT AT is I bought a light kit for it, and then I hooked it up to a little Wemo device, so I can actually. I'm gonna do it right now. Hey Google, turn on the AT AT. Sure, turning on the AT AT. The AT AT, and. It's all lit up. Maybe I should. Maybe I now. Maybe I need to upload a video of that. But there's reviews of it. It's it's the at at. But I actually bought all the snowtroopers for it. So it's got 40 snowtroopers, the correct complement for an at at, um, inside it, and Darth Vader's like in the cockpit, standing behind the commander. I realize that's not where he was during the Battle of Hoth. But you know, bear with me. And then, uh, whoop, hold on. Oh, 
I'm not drinking enough soda here to keep things from to stop from coughing. Oh, I'm seeing stars now. That was quite a cough. Um, if you're a cardiologist, tell me if that's bad, because I may not be. I may not last the uh, the uh, the live stream here. So, um, yeah, and then. <laughs> I've got a, on a bookcase a, a few feet from the ad at there's just one lone snow trooper hunkered down behind like some bricks that are made to look like a little ice, you know, and snow rocks, rocks of snow. Uh, you know what I mean? Anyways. Uh, <laughs> and it's like, he's been abandoned. He's just hunkered down there waiting for this walker to rescue him. Uh, anyways. And I got some Valkyries here from Macross. So yeah, maybe someday I'll fire up the webcam and just try to keep my ugly mug out of it. You don't need to see that. Uh, let's see. Where are we? We're getting there. Okay, you can't see this, but I'm going to go Google Inveterate, because <laughs> I'm not sure I use that right. I only know that word through context. Inveterate. Uh, there we go. Having a particular habit, activity, or interest that is long established and unlikely to change. All right, well, there you go. Uh, one could say we're inveterate lot row players, although I did kind of break that habit in the last few years. Um, it might be kicking back in, though. Um, I've just been more into Tolkien again lately. It, it's been ever since... I mean, I when I was little and we watched the, you know... Uh, I never know how to pronounce those names, but you, you remember The Hobbit. The Hobbit TV movie and then the, the Return of the King TV movie that came out after the uh, uh, Lord of the Rings theatrical movie that uh now not 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 the peter jackson ones but this is back in the 80s when i was a kid um or late 70s i think it was early 80s um back she bang around oh gosh i can never remember how to lord of the rings rankin rankin bass okay is the one who did the hobbit and the return of the king and then Lord of the Rings movie. Uh, I'm really embarrassed that I can't come up with this right now. 1978. Uh, R Ralph Bakshi. Yeah, I was saying Bakshi, wasn't I? <laughs> I got to go with my gut. Um, so, you know, I had watched those, but I'd also had a neighbor that... Um, that was into the stuff and you know he he was a, he was older and he would come over and play Dungeons and Dragons with me and my brother but we weren't really playing it we were too young we were just you know throwing dice and he was you know being a very kind and generous uh DM and uh I never really played a lot of pen and paper RPGs I bought a lot of them but I didn't play them they I didn't have a lot of friends that were into that kind of stuff and I was kind of a closet closeted geek or nerd uh my whole upbringing i would uh i would play battletech and ultima on my uh, battletech you know i wouldn't play it i would just you know <laughs> read the books and fill out the record sheets and things like that and then every once in a while i'd con one of my friends into playing it but um and then i'd play ultima at night and then when i got older and i was in high school i would i would read my lord of the rings and then go to football practice and then uh, I was fortunate to have a girlfriend that I uh, that I adored at the time. And then I would come home and watch Star Trek after her curfew. <laughs> and uh, so it was a... Uh, how did I get off on this? Um, how did I get on this, I should say? Uh, I don't even remember. Um, oh, the movies. Um, so, <laughs> so Tolkien for me, it was, you know, it started with those, but then... Uh, probably in high school, uh, my freshman year of high school, I read finally for myself, The Fellowship of the Ring and just, you know, <laughs> the, I, I'm making a melodramatic gesture. I was transported, you know, like it just, there's a golden age 
I think, to get into fantasy or sci-fi uh, when you can still suspend your disbelief completely and just get into it. And I think that's in your junior high and high school years. And then as you get into your early 20s, I think that kind of fades. So I'm grateful that I read it at that age and uh, read The Lord of the Rings completely, you know, obviously completely, and then read The Silmarillion kind of I loved it but didn't quite get it until the second reading maybe a year later and th after that the Silmarillion was my all-time favorite uh, uh you know that that's just it that's magic to me just the just the you know the elves awakening under only starlight and uh before the sun and moon you know and 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 the the first moon rise is just all those all those aspects of it are just amazing to me and uh now I, then i've reread the silmarillion and lord of the rings every few years for you know i'm now approaching i'm a few years from 50 and um and i've got all the audiobooks on my phone so you know when i need to, lately i've been listening to them again just to get to sleep at night but i intend to give a focused read slash listen it's so frustrating because you fall asleep and then you wake up the next day and you're like okay this doesn't count as enjoying this 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 book when you sleep through half of it and then can't remember where you fell asleep etc but i need to actually in the middle of the day start reading you know these books again um unfinished tales is awesome that's actually what i've been listening to recently um but what was my point there was a point uh well anyways um i'm just you know, if I do start live streaming, maybe the perspective I would have on this is, uh, you know, I'm kind of an old school gamer. Um, I was watching somebody's YouTube video the other day where um, they said that they came back to Lot Row and played it. And just the fact that you had to walk everywhere and, you know, all these things that he said were, you know, detrimental. I was like, no, that's what we're missing more of now. That it used to be so much more like that. And I wish it was. Um so, you know, there's a bit of an old school take on things, a nostalgic take on things for the way it was and just comparing the way it was to how it is. And I'll try to be fair. Um, obviously, I have a point of view. So, you know, uh, there's a... Um, there's... Everyone has their biases. But you can be biased and also fair. You know, somebody who understands the counter-argument uh, and can actually express it honestly rather than just setting up straw men, that's, that's somebody who, you know, they have their bias, but they can also be fair. So I will strive to do that uh, as, I, as I come across aspects of the game that, I, that, has cha that have changed and that I wish hadn't. Um, and uh, so, yeah, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty, pretty up on the lore. I, I used to really consider myself kind of a Tolkien aficionado uh or uh uh what was a what's another term for that i don't know i don't know I, expert is too, you know too strong a term but but then you see these youtube ja youtube channels come up for um you know um nerd of the rings and things like that and they're clearly i mean the tolkien professor and uh and others and you realize okay um I definitely, you know, I haven't read all the history of Middle Earth, uh, where they just take apart every manuscript that Tolkien wrote, and his son Christopher Tolkien just goes through them. I've got a few of them, but I just haven't sat down or slogged through them. Um, but, uh, but yeah, okay. So uh, we're almost to the end here. As soon as this thing launches successfully, uh, we will wrap this. Uh, we will wrap this live stream up, unless people join up and ask some questions. I was kind of thrilled when like eight people joined that first live stream of mine and, and asked questions and made comments and stuff. That was really cool. Um, I've since changed to OBS uh, and that seems to have fixed my microphone static issues. Um, my microphone and, and videos streaming software via NVIDIA experience just do not get along. So, um, yeah. Let's see here. That 55% will suddenly jump, I believe. 
What else? I'm looking around my office. My studio. Uh, I've got my Russell Crowe Gladiator poster that I just love on the wall back there. It's it's a more rare one from, what is it, in French? <laughs> Why does that sound so pretentious as soon as you say something's in French? Well, it's it's not like a plebeian Gladiator poster. It's it's in French. Um, but, uh, yeah, that, that, it's, uh, it's up on the wall behind me. And then, uh, I got my Tolkien books on the bookcase, my Stormtrooper helmet, my Boba Fett helmet. Oh, Ultima. That's actually what my, my neighbor friend introduced me to as well. The, the Ultima series of games. And so, uh, I've got all my boxed, uh, from when I was a kid. Uh, there, I've had them since, since ni the 1980s, the early 1980s. So, uh, got those stacked up here. I got my old monitor. And uh yeah, that's we're just looking around the room right now. Uh did I mention the Macross Valkyries? Anyone like Macross? Robotech that Robotech took Macross and Southern Cross and Genesis Climber Mospita and mangled them and made them one long uh American cartoon as opposed to three separate anime in Japan that are more adult oriented and don't treat the audience like idiots. Uh, and so if you liked Robotech as a kid, but you tried to watch it, oh, here we go. Uh, but you tried to watch it recently and found it just too much for kids. Uh, try to find the original Macross instead. And uh, you'll find that it's much more easy to palette as an adult. Easy to palette. That does not. That is not proper grammar. Palatable. It is much more palatable as an as an adult. I do not think palate is a verb. <laughs> so uh, let's see here. Bear with me when I try to come up with the password for this account. But I think I've got it at the tip of my fingers here. That'll be a topic for another. Um, video, maybe, since this is Lotro, Lotro. I'm eventually going to have to start saying Lotro because everyone else says L Lotro, and I say Lotro, and that's going to annoy the, you know, what out of people. So, um, this is Lotro Tech Tips after all, so maybe I should make a little tech tip video about embedding your password in your Lotro shortcut. Ooh, I've already changed. That is going to be a hard habit to break, though. Um, Anyways, um, oh, so, yeah, Tolkien, Peter Jackson films, I've warmed to them. I mean, I've always thought they were awesome in their scenery and things like that. I get all nerd ragey about, you know, Frodo's too young, Frodo should be 50 years old, and, and, um, and Elijah Wood seems like a really nice guy and a great actor, and he did a great job for Peter Jackson. Peter Jackson's vision of of Frodo, but he just doesn't. He's just not my Frodo. <laughs> uh, he doesn't look anything like the Frodo I envisioned, and I don't know. Sometimes that, like that, that at the end of the Fellowship of the Ring, which, by the way, the Fellowship of the Ring is an absolutely fantastic adaptation, um, and and, and ev all the changes made seemed necessary and were thus forgivable, or not even forgivable, but apt and well done. And then it just progressively, through the Two Towers and Return of the King, in my opinion, they just they make changes that weren't necessary, are not apt, do damage to the narrative, the spirit of the books, the point of the books in some ways. Um, the three things that really irk me are Theoden being like literally possessed by Saruman, uh, and if anyone has a defamation case against Peter Jackson, it's Denethor. Because Denethor, while having some rough edges in the book, wasn't that guy from the movies. Um, he was standing against the shadow as well as he could, given his position and the poisoning of his mind by the Palantir, etc., etc. Um, oh, the Faramir. So there's four things. The whole Faramir... I love that Faramir is never tempted by the ring in the books. But in the movie, he almost completely gives in, takes Frodo all the way to Osgiliath. But 
anyways uh but the absolute worst part is the army of the dead at Minas Tirith. Oh my. <laughs> that just kills me. The the fact that we just watched all that to be clear, in the books, the army of the dead does not come to Minas Tirith. Aragorn kind of commandeers them. He uses them to stop the Corsairs in the south, thus freeing up the army of Gondor in the south to board the Corsair ships. And as real men, that army of Gondor, they sail up uh, to Minas Tirith and, and come off the ships and fight a real battle that could be lost. <laughs> and so it's just so aggravating and just such poor storytelling to have this deus ex machina unde undefeatable, uh, what's the word, invincible, army of the dead, this army of green scrubbing bubbles that hops off the ship and kills everything in its wake with no losses on its, you know, and no, nothing can stand against it, apparently. I mean, it just, like, literally dissolves an oliphant out in the background, if you're watching in the background, um, and scrubs the battlefield clear of all enemy right after we just watched Theoden sacrifice his life and all of the Rohirrim that, that, you know, scream death and then charge, you know, and not to mention all the Gondorian soldiers and all everyone who'd sacrificed up to that point. I realize we're done, but I got to finish this rant. Um, <laughs> all that sacrifice is rendered, to my mind, moot because it didn't seem to be, uh, you know, it looked like Pippin and Gandalf could have held out a little longer there in that citadel. And if Theoden had just you know, stopped to relieve himself for 10 minutes on the side of the road before arriving at Minas Tirith, everything would have been fine without them. They didn't, they weren't necessary. It rendered all their sacrifices unnecessary because as soon as the army of green scrubbing bubbles shows up, there's no, there's no need for anyone else. They could, they could do, uh, and yeah, just, I think that's bad storytelling. I think it's, I, uh, maybe I'm overthinking it. I tend to do that. But it just, ah, and it's so unnecessary. Um, anyways, I think Peter Jackson just loves ghosts and that green ghoulish thing and wanted to give it a more prominent role. Let's, uh, let's log in. All right. I believe my username is that. I might blur that out for the permanent feed. But you know what? I don't really use this account for much. So have at it. And let's see. I'm going to mute for this part. All right. Why well, remembered my password? I agree. Read this in its entirety. Read this in its entirety and click I agree. And excuse me. And um don't panic. I thought that it had failed to launch once before and crash silently, which is what it used to do. Um, on a test run on a VM, though, I did have to launch it twice, but not this time. As you see there, we detect that this machine is capable of running DirectX 11, which is funny considering it's a virtual GPU, but here we go. Go away, game bar. And there we go. And allow access. I'm not a fan of it doing this... Uh, auto resizing so let's turn that off all right and hopefully that won't have screwed this stream up too much well it's still auto resizing hopefully you just see it in a corner let me see what you see here yeah you're seeing it in a corner that's fine sorry about that though we'll fix that in just a minute so our worst fears have come to pass uh, let's get in here. So yeah, as you can see, we're working. We're in Direct DirectX 11. Again, this is in a virtual machine. Do not judge. Do not be harsh. 
it's not going to be good. <laughs> but it shows that it works. So let's get this to the proper... There we go. And I think we'll leave it at that. Uh, as you can see, it worked. No muss, no fuss. And that process, that if you watch from the beginning, that'll also get you installed on Steam. Uh, I wouldn't recommend Steam, as I've said before. Why? Uh, use Steam when you need to use Steam, but you don't need to use Steam to play Lot Row. So, in my opinion, don't. Um, why don't we wrap this up? Because we are uh, we are in game, and uh, <laughs> I'm rotating it. It's so slow, uh, but we are in game. It is working. Uh, thank you for checking this out, and uh, hopefully the uh, hopefully the actual um, saved edited video will be much shorter than this. All right, everyone, have a good evening. Enjoy Middle-earth when you can.